My name is Dominic Ashburn, Mr. Grateful, and I'm a real human being. <laughs> I was born in the United States in 1997, and I'm obsessed with making people say wow to breaking their mental framework and to making them question their concept of a limited reality. And I try to do this in a way that is practical and kind. I, just, I have an end goal of making them believe a bit more in themselves. And I think this is why I connect with technology is because the tech industry is a space that is constantly trying to outdo itself simply for the sake of defying impossibilities. Just for the sake of doing it. Should AI be controlled? The obvious answer is yes. Um, that comforts people. But let's just explore that answer a little bit. Who should then be in control of it? And who would control them? The entity in control of the most powerful technology in the world. I think that when we feel out of control, we feel afraid. And when we are afraid, we yearn for control. But when we're unafraid, we let go. Um, so to me, asking how to control AI is a bit of an oxymoron. It's like trying to control nature or the economy or a child or ourselves. <laughs> um, in each case, we should just approach it with care and intentionality. There should be rules, disciplines, uh, and proper practices instructed by people who test its behavior and limitations under stress. Uh, and we should also know exactly what our goal is with it. Is it to automate our lives, to free us from work? And if so, what will you do with your spare time? Is it to predict things? And how will you react to knowing the future? Is it to personalize experiences, to create art? I mean, if so, none of these things require control. They just require a clear intention. So yearning for control seems like a reaction from fear. We are the creators and the beneficiaries of AI, of artificial intelligence. So to try to control it seems to miss the point entirely. Like, let's think about what is the best case scenario that we can think of. And let's have it help us build that. How does blockchain add value in the context of AI? The first and most important value added from blockchain in the context of AI is its ability to verify data. I'll break this down. So ChatGPT is trained on about a petabyte of text data from various sources across the internet. Not the entirety of all the data on the internet, but still a lot of data. It's like equivalent to 1.3 billion books. Um, and other AI applications are trained on vast amounts of visual and auditory data as well. Um, and from the organization of all of this data has emerged generative AI. And it's a predictive software that's capable of responding to human prompts with text, images, videos, and audio that is similar to those vast amounts of data from the initial training. So in April of 2023, Midjourney introduced their V5 model that generates images that are sometimes indistinguishable from images taken with a camera. And this poses an opportunity for blockchain superpower of verification to watermark content generated by AI on the blockchain to distinguish AI generated content from captured or human hand content. What do I think about reanimating people using AI? Um, yeah, I did. I, I reanimated uh, Steve Jobs and Bill Gates to have conversations with them. Um, but I'll start here. I am creating an AI counterpart to myself. It's already underway. Uh, and with the emergence of generative AI, I can now create clones of my voice, create images of myself that didn't previously exist and mimic the personality of my word choices. Um, I've had my voice cloned professionally by a company called Eleven Labs from Poland. I provided them with about an hour of voice recordings, and over the weekend, 
they sent my voice clone where I can type in anything and have it respond in a voice that matches my tone and my syntax with like 99% accuracy. Um, this obviously needs to be used carefully and respectively. The technology to do it isn't perfect yet, but we can see the potential of its clarity as tech advances. Uh, but there are some really cool use cases for this. And actually, I'll let my voice clone answer the rest of this question. For me as a content creator, I can create a podcast from all of my written content using my voice without spending the time in a professional recording studio. The received content is the same, but I am making it accessible in a new format for people interested. Imagine all books being narrated by the author a sick mother who wants their children to be able to ask for her advice or for consolement after her passing. On a lighter note, what if you could have a counterpart to yourself created and see yourself play as the main character in your favorite movie? Consider a person learning to speak English can be taught by their own voice. Or as an English speaker, I can communicate to someone in Spanish or Japanese in my voice to create more personal interactions without language barriers or a busy executive who wishes to give their insight at multiple meetings at once. So I brought the ethical concerns up to this company as well before I had my voice cloned. And they told me that no one will be able to create voice clones of other people with the professional model. Um, like you'll need to go through a voice capture that will verify your identity using random words before you can use the service. Another handy use case for blockchain verification. <laughs> yeah, um, Agent GPT. I started the Agent GPT challenge on Instagram under my username, Mr. Grateful, and I prompted a chat GPT thread to behave as a social media manager and to give me strategies and insights to grow our following to 100,000 followers in 30 days. And I started with around 3,000 followers when I began making content, and we reached 100,000 followers by day 22. And on the last day of the challenge, we completed with 167,000 followers. And this was a collaborative and iterative effort. Like GPT didn't always give me good ideas. It just it doesn't have it doesn't have like the sauce, and it doesn't have a taste for content. And it's just because social media moves so fast that creative trends can shift daily. And GPT-4 is only trained on a set of data that ended in September of 2021. Uh, so my weakness is that I didn't strategize for potential problems and I've never ran into a social media campaign before. Um, hence 3000 followers. But when we leaned on each other's strengths, things started to click like human beings are creative. I have an infinite constant stream of content ideas while AI is logical, analytical, and precise. And when we come together, I can focus on producing good media while delegating the strategy through data and analytics of the social media metrics to AI. Um, I gave it the transcripts and metrics to every post and it would analyze our success and failures and then suggest new strategies along the way. However, I'd say what surprised me the most was how emotionally supportive it was when we had our first major problem. It was on day 18, our page was spammed by 60,000 bot followers and it felt like everything we worked for was ruined. Um, I was worried about losing the trust of the community and losing the eureka moment of hitting $100,000 or a hundred, <laughs> Yeah, soon, 100,000 followers organically. And Agent GPT instructed me to just be authentic and honest and reminded me that growth is not linear. And in response, I told my community what happened and we ended up growing our community list. Uh, we ended up growing the email list of our community uh, to protect our community. You know, and it, it really helped. It, it leveled us all up. And we're a team now. So by understanding AI and its limitations, you can have a partnership with it um, to enhance your life. 
you know, at the same time, uh, there are some very important things that I did not regarding AI that must be executed by a dedicated human. And the first is giving selflessly. The most important aspect of my growth was providing people with pure value in the form of easily understandable education and entertaining visual supplements. Like, don't hold back. Um, you may feel like you need to hold on to one of your secrets or omit a piece of information to keep your edge. But the real edge is in giving it away and then staying a step ahead by just trying the next thing. And secondly was persistent consistency. Um, life provided an obstacle every day. It does that to see if you actually care about what you're doing. So just push through and eventually things will fall into place for you instead of being an obstacle. And finally, I didn't do it for the followers. Uh, people were worried, scared, and confused about AI. I decided to ease minds and hearts by showing people how they could partner with this technology to reach their goals, even ones that they felt were impossible. So to me, this is just the beginning. Um, now we have a decent distribution channel. And my next challenge is even more important than this by orders of magnitude. What does AI change for artists? Nothing. Uh, we can speak of artists as people who create things to express themselves. And in the case of a true artist, the way they tie their shoes is the same way they water a plant or paint a masterpiece. And in this sense, we can see generative AI as simply a new medium to express that inevitable creativity. But everyone knows that everyone in a museum has an opinion, whether they're artists themselves or not. So we have to look at the beholders as well as the artists which is what people really mean. Like, will artificial intelligence make art easy? Will people who are not artists now be able to make art? And if so, will people then value the art of the true artist less or more? Uh, there are people who study art. They observe it for its age, its authenticity, its technical process of creation. And there are people who like art, you know, like scrolling and tapping. <laughs> uh, and there are people who love art, who are moved by it, and they spend money on it. And then there are people who idolize art. They care nothing of the material art itself, but of the artist's vision. And they're captivated by the artist's obsession with expression. So in the future, we can expect commercial material uh, with, an intention, with an intention of like returning revenue to be more generated by AI in order to increase margins on their investment. Um, but we can expect artists to simply be artists and let the beholders just be amazed by the ingenuity of human creativity, regardless of the medium. Thank you very much for having me. I'm Dominic, Mr. Grateful. Peace.